What if you need some network attached storage, but you're not an expert in configuring RAID volumes? Maybe you just want to throw some disks into a box, click a few buttons and hey presto, network storage with redundancy. Well, I might just have the device for you, but don't switch off if you're someone who wants to be able to configure every aspect of your NAS and maybe even use it to run some virtual machines. This device can do that too. So let's take a closer look at the Terramaster F4424. So full disclosure, Terramaster sent over this review sample without charge, and I don't believe we have to return it, but I am free to give my honest opinion, and Terramaster don't get to see this video before it goes live or make any changes to it. So let me start by talking about the easy setup, and then we'll go into more detailed specs. But one spec I do want to mention at the outset is that this NAS device has two and a half gigabit ethernet ports, two of them. So if you get yourself a two and a half gigabit network switch, you can enjoy faster speeds. And two and a half gigabit works over your existing one gigabit cabling. The Terramaster F4424 retails at a penny under 500 pounds or $500. And in Europe, it's 550 euros. But as always, there are deals to be had on Amazon and I'll pop some links in the description. But even at the retail price, I think it's fair for the specification that's on offer. Now, as with all NAS devices, the price doesn't include your storage. And Terramaster didn't send me any specific drives for testing with this unit. So I thought it would be interesting to do what a lot of customers will do. Just throw in the drives that I already have to get started. So I had a rummage around our server room and I found a couple of eight terabyte Seagate drives to use. Now, of course, this is a four bay NAS, so you can install four separate drives, but not everyone who buys a NAS like this will fully populate all the bays on day one. You might start with two drives and add more later. So let's pop the drives in. You don't need any tools, you just eject the sled and remove these two side pieces. They're used to lock the drive in place with plastic pins instead of screws. All you do is line up the drive in the sled, insert the locks on each side, and then slide them back into the NAS. Nice and simple. And from there, we just plug it in using the included power supply and network cable, switch it on, and give it a couple of minutes or so to boot up and obtain a network address. You then use a computer on the same network for the next part of the setup. In the box with the NAS is this simple quick start guide, which tells you to type an address into your web browser, or you can scan the QR code. But I found the site doesn't always load. When it does, you get a lovely online manual. But if not, you've got to go to Terramaster's main website because there is no printed user manual in the box. If we go to their website, we choose the download link from the support menu. And from there, you can download a copy of the user manual. But then you need to click on this not very obvious desktop and system tab to find the TNAS app. There's a version for Windows, Mac, and Ubuntu Linux. Just install this app and it will find the device and get you straight into setup. Okay, so now we're connected. How easy is it going to be to set up this NAS now that we've installed a couple of drives? Well, first of all, we have to accept this warning about using the correct type of drive. And helpfully, there is a link to the hard drive compatibility list. And we're then asked how we want to initialize the NAS. More experienced users will want to select custom here, but I wanted to see what the experience would be like for a less tech savvy user. So I clicked default. Now I'm warned that it's going to wipe any data on the two drives I installed, and that's it. It then downloads the operating system for the NAS, installs it, and restarts. And when we come back online, we're prompted to create a super user account. Again, there's a helpful tip here about not using the super user for daily operations, and that's pretty good security advice. You should create separate user accounts. But all we need to do here is create our super user's username, choose a password, and enter an email address. This email will receive notifications from the NAS, which is a nice touch. And that's it, the super user's created, and we're shown the current IP address, so that we can log in without using that TNAS app. All we have to do now is agree to the end user license terms, and that's the end of the setup process. You can see here that the NAS has automatically created an eight terabyte storage volume. Remember, we installed two eight terabyte drives, so this has been set up as a mirror, so our data will be duplicated to both drives. If one fails, we can replace it without losing our data. By default, the NAS has SMB and Apple file sharing switched on, so whether you're using Mac, Windows, or Linux, you can now see the NAS on the network and connect to it using your username and password. Each user gets their own home folder by default, 
and then you can apply whatever permissions you need and create multiple different shares. That's a pretty seamless setup and I would say pretty easy for most users. But you do need to know a little bit about what's happening in the background with the storage array. The default setup is using TerraMaster's T-RAID and there's more information about how this works on TerraMaster's website. But let's stay in the mindset of a non-tech savvy user for now. What does this mean in real world terms? Well, it means that you can add more drives at any time and the NAS will expand your storage volume to give you the best combination of usable storage space and redundancy. It also means that you can replace individual drives with larger drives as your needs grow. And you'll always be protected against a maximum of one drive failing, provided you install at least two drives. In fact, here's another great thing for users on a budget. You can actually start with one drive and add a second for redundancy later. Of course, you won't be protected against drive failure if you've only got one drive installed. Just bear in mind that it takes a long time for large RAID arrays to synchronize. As you can see here, our eight terabyte RAID would take about 1270 minutes or 21 hours. And each time you swap a disk or upgrade the array, it's going to need to synchronize. I think the T-RAID concept is a nice idea, especially for non-tech savvy users, but also for those who are tech savvy, but are maybe time limited. With the caveat that I haven't tested this over a long period of time yet, so I can't offer an opinion on how reliable it is. So I'll say the same thing that I always do. RAID is not a substitute for proper backup routines. If your data is critical, you must create regular backups, even if you are using a NAS. But this NAS makes that very easy to do. More advanced users can choose how to set up their storage pool. You might choose a RAID 6 type and have two redundant drives or whatever you want. Just because this NAS works well for everyday users, it doesn't mean that geeks like me aren't well catered for. It covers single drives, RAID 0, 1, 5, 6, and 10. You can have a hot spare and use ext4 or btrfs and naturally you can have multiple storage spaces and it is hot swappable so let's take a look at the specs and run through some of those available features obviously we have four three and a half inch drive bays to the front but the sleds also have mounting holes for two and a half inch drives you do need to use screws for this but there is a bag of them provided with the nas and this opens up the possibility of using SATA SSDs for a silent, super fast NAS. Now to the rear of the unit, we've got an HDMI port. If you want your NAS to double up as a media player for your TV, it's capable of up to 4K at 60 Hertz and modern video codecs like H.265 are supported. And then we've got two USB ports, a Type-A and a Type-C. They're both 3.2 specs, so that's 10 gigabits per second. And you can use these to plug in USB backup drives, but apparently you can also connect one of TerraMaster's direct attached storage devices to expand the storage even further. Now, I actually own a five bay TerraMaster DAS, which I reviewed some years ago and I still actively use. So I could connect that to this NAS and then have some automated backup routines going on between the two. That's uh, really cool. Next, we've got our ethernet connections, two two and a half gigabit ports. And it is possible to aggregate these ports if you've got a network switch that supports aggregation. And if you do that, you can enjoy five gigabits per second of total network bandwidth. And you might want to do that if you're going down the SSD route with the drives, or if you need to have a couple of users accessing the device concurrently. Now, if we open the NAS up, you'll see that we've got two M.2 2280 slots for NVMe SSDs. We can use these to expand our storage or for caching purposes, which would speed things up and allow you to fully utilize all of that network bandwidth. And you can see here that we also have a user accessible SODIMM slot, which is populated with eight gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. You can go up to 32 gigabytes if you want. The CPU in this F4424 model is a four core Intel N95, and that's gonna be more than enough for the majority of users. But if you do want more, a couple of hundred pounds or dollars extra will get you the F4424 Pro version of the NAS. And that comes with a Core i3 CPU and 32 gigs of RAM as standard. And you might want that if you're planning to use the NAS for more than just storage, because there is a well-stocked app library, which seems to include just about everything you could think of for a device like this. We've got lots of choices for backup tools, multimedia servers, there's CCTV apps, VPN servers, web servers, and Docker and you can run any combination of these things. Want to use the NAS as a host for your virtual machines and also run your Plex media library and a LAMP stack? You can do that. 
And there's also community apps for everything that's not covered here, though obviously TerraMaster isn't responsible for those. I have a single large fan at the back of the unit here, and I found it to be very quiet in use. And generally, the unit seems to be of pretty reasonable build quality, if a little bit plasticky. But it's offering a huge amount for the price point, so I will give it a pass on that plasticky feel. I also do think that TerraMaster could do a bit better with the setup instructions. Make sure the website works reliably and just put a printed manual in the box. Something else that I'd like to see is a small display on the front of the device, just to show status and things like the IP address. That would be useful. Perhaps a bit of a stretch at this price point, but it would be nice to have as an option. Overall though, I'm really impressed, both with the ease of setup and use for everyday users, and the scope of configuration and usability for advanced users. So it gets a thumbs up from me. But I'm gonna do some more long-term testing with this, and then I'll report back on my findings at some point in the future. Uh, to make sure that you don't miss that content, please subscribe and ring the bell. And you might also like to give me a thumbs up, or down if you prefer, but I'll see you again soon for some more Geek Week.